Oh no! Is that the the main runner? I've been climbing this hill hoping to get the lead runner in the marathon. That's where they run. So here we are at Corf. That's Corf Castle. And the runners in the 16 miler and the marathon are all heading down the hill, round the bend and through Corf. And I'm hoping that we haven't missed the leader in the marathon. Although I feel we may have. It's a steep hill to climb up this. Especially when you're trying to get there at pace. Hi guys. Do you know if the leader of the marathon's been through? We have no idea. You don't know, don't worry. Yeah, they're doing, most of them are doing a 16 mile race. But there's a, people doing the marathon coming through. This looks like a marathon runner. Hiya. Are you first in the marathon? Sorry? Are you first lady in the marathon? Uh, I think so. What's your name? Lisa. Hi Lisa, well done. So Lisa thinks she's second in the marathon, um, second lady, so lead marathon runner must have gone through already. But there will now be a number of marathon runners and 16 mile runners coming through here. Hello buddy, Hello. 16 miler. Or marathon? Marathon. Marathon, well done buddy. Thank you. Do you know what position you're in? I'm going to guess ninth. Ninth, okay. No problem, well done. So that man reckons he's ninth in the marathon. So this is a beautiful location. This is Corf. That's Corf Castle. And uh, the runners come through here at 20 miles. They've got six miles to go. And it's basically that hill that you can see right in front of us. The, the, the um, pathway goes up to that uh, mast there and then along the ridge line all the way down into Swanich at the other end. So that is another six miles or so from here. Hello number 14, what's your name? Mark. Mark from Egdon Harriers, well done. Weymouth, yeah. And Weymouth, uh, what position do you think you're in? Seventh or eighth. Okay, so the guy in front of you guessed at ninth, but okay. you reckon you're about seventh yeah. or eighth? Okay, yeah. I'm finishing to finish. <laughs> yeah, well, you're well, on. Nice, no, if I you think. can do it, if you can do 10k in an hour, you're under four hours. Well, we'll see what we can do. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. Well done. So marathon runners coming, si <laughs> marathon runners coming thick and fast now. So we, we, I think we've had about six or seven or eight runners through already for the marathon. I just finished my 10k not long ago, so made it up here in a dash. Hello, buddy. What's your name? Piotr. Piotr. Well done. Uh, when I did the marathon last year, the route was down there, which is much, much steeper. I think they've chosen a safer option going to the left there. And uh, they've come, the marathon runners have come all the way along this ridge line here. That's the coast, basically, all the way along there. Uh, and they've turned in at Tynum, uh, which is an abandoned village. They've come down into Tynum and then up and then along this ridge line here to Corf. Um, there is a village called Kingston somewhere down there where the runners kind of come inland a bit and then go along and then back out again. Um, but the views from there, as you saw if you were with me yesterday, the views from there are absolutely amazing, really stunning. This is Swire Head here. 
Um, and Swirehead has some absolutely beautiful views out across the sea and, and across the coastline. Um, so the runners have, have done that in the early part of the race and they hit Tynum at 15 miles and so it's another five miles out of Tynum along the ridge line of this hill uh, to here to Corfe and then another six miles home from Corfe along that ridge line there. And if you've never been here before, Corf Castle is a massive tourist attraction, as you can see, because it's prominence on the hill there um, and it's classic ruins. And this is a beautiful spot to uh, view it from. And we've got some more marathon runners coming through. And also to, to add to the beauty of the place, uh, there is a steam train just about to pass along the railway line here, past the castle. So we'll get these runners coming through as the steam hopefully as the steam train passes by that'd be a lovely shot wouldn't it hi guys hello, hello. who are you remember you from last week all oh, right yeah. hello there hi. how's it going yeah i'm doing this on my dad all yeah. oh, right this is your dad yeah. hello brilliant well done enjoy your enjoy the last six miles good job and there they go and the steam train's just coming along what's your name buddy Sam Patterson. Sam Patterson, yeah. well done. Somewhere around 15th. There's a the steam train in the distance. Goes to Swanwich. No steam coming out of his engine though. I wonder why that is. Normally there's steam flying out of that engine. Maybe he's cheating, maybe they're using a, a carriage, diesel carriage. No, there wouldn't be. That's definitely got to be steam still, hasn't it? They wouldn't cheat, would they, on the steam railway line? <laughs> okay, more marathon runners coming now. And here comes Cat Simpson. Cat Simpson's in third place for the ladies. Hello buddy, what's your name? Uh, Mick. Hello Mick, how are you feeling? Shocking. Shocking, you've only got six miles to go mate, down the hill and then up that lovely ridge line there. Yeah, Take care, have a good run. Thanks. It's the lovely Cat Simpson, how's it going babe? Yeah, good. How are you feeling? Okay, yeah pretty good. Pretty yeah, you're good. in third. Yeah. Go on, try and catch a few. Oh, taking it easy. No, don't do that. Oh. Don't do that. Well done. So Kat Simpson, really good Centurion runner. She's in third place. Uh, she's going to go down there to Corfe, through the centre of Corfe, out the other side where that steam train puff of smoke is, through there, out the other side and up the hill there. So all these runners are going to make it home in four to four and a half hours it depends how quickly they can do the last 10k but it's now five past 12 so um it's gonna be oh i reckon well done buddy what's it, how what's your name amos amos well done buddy they're looking at around four hours 15 four and a half hours now uh it, given that there's a few hills between now and the end uh they will slow down a little bit so they're not going to do a fast 10k little bit of a gap so if you weren't with me yesterday um, you can see right over in the distance there that's uh, Pool Harbour and Bournemouth and I keep thinking yesterday I said this as well I'm sure you can see the catamaran in dock over there but maybe I'm wrong maybe that's too big for a catamaran and then Brown Sea Island as well you can see there And although you can't see the steam train, you can hear it, can't you? Hello, buddy. What's your name? Chris. This is Chris. 
Still just about top 20, I think, mate. Yeah. Thanks. Looking at four and a half hours if you can push it. So we're just waiting for people to come along this path. This looks like fourth lady. Hello there. Fourth lady, what's your name? Eugenia, hi there. Hi, uh, hi Look at Eugenia. That beautiful castle. That is gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? Well done, you're in fourth place. Keep going. Well done, guys. I'm fifth lady. You're fifth lady, excellent stuff. <laughs> and a lot of people will stop here and take a picture as they come down, especially if they're not uh, gunning for a time. This is always a super spot to uh, take a picture. Enjoy it, mate. Thank you. Should get in in four and a half. Uh, five would be <laughs> so, according to Wikipedia, that mound there has been occupied. For six, uh, since 6000 BC. So <laughs> there's been activity on that land right in front of us for many thousands of years. And uh, here's another interesting fact for you. The name Corf, as in Corf Castle, is derived from a Saxon word, Kjorfan, which means cut or carve, and that refers to the cut of the hills where Corf Castle is built. And there's been some kind of castle on that hill since the 10th century. Hello, buddy. Right. Yeah, what's your name? Stephen, well done. How are you feeling? Pretty rough. Pretty rough? Yeah. Well, you, you're doing all right for time. Yeah. yeah Just I nice, gentle jogging. You'll get in under four, four and a half, 4.45. Yeah, somewhere around that. Yeah, be. enjoy it. Yeah. Take care, buddy. Well done. You might still be in the top 20 as well. So yeah, uh, there has been a building on that hill since the 10th century. So 900 years, 1,000 uh, years or so. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, you want to ask me any questions, I'll have a quick look now at, uh, at YouTube and Facebook chat as uh, we wait for other runners to come through. Uh, Leo, good morning. Jonathan Cost, good morning. Cat Woods, good morning. Hello. Uh, hello, who are you? Ah, hello. We saw you yesterday, didn't we? How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. I think you, I'm... you are in uh, fourth, fifth place, fourth place for the girls. Lovely. I think. See you at the end. Yes, well done.
such a lovely location this. I do like it. You could sit here for a long time. Uh, uh, Jonathan, no, um, well, yes, I was doing the math. Originally, I was going to do the ultra, uh, which was yesterday, and then I got injured, and I said I wasn't fit enough to do the ultra, so I would drop back and do the marathon. But then, whilst filming yesterday, I was having conversations with um, the uh, race organiser, race director, and we agreed that it would be better um, for me to do the 10k and then get out onto the course and film some more of the marathon runners coming through. Uh, so that's what we've done. So I did my 10k this morning. Um, I know I tried to stream it, but it didn't work, but I have recorded it. So I'll kind of, I've, I've recorded it and I'll, I'll put it on YouTube as a kind of live stream um, event. Um, so yes, I did the 10k, got in the car and drove out to Corfe Castle here to see the uh, the runners coming through just missed as yesterday just missed the lead runners go through um but we'll we'll catch a few more marathon runners now and uh, then we'll head to the end uh, at swanwich and catch the runners coming in uh, to the finish and no doubt we'll miss the the winner as well there <laughs> but never mind Uh, Lorraine Collins is saying come on Terry Heath I think Terry might be a little bit longer uh, we might not make it in time to see Terry at Corfe Castle but we'll see him at the end hello buddy what's your name uh, John Paul John Paul well done how are you feeling brilliant good Thank yeah you. you can't beat this view now can you Lovely. have you found the course so far wonderful yeah really enjoying nice. it well, I th you might just be in the top. I've lost count now, but you might be in the top. Someone told me. You might, yeah, you might be in the top 20. And uh, keep pushing it. You'll get in in four and a half. Will do. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. Beautiful view, isn't it? Stopping too often to take photos. I know, yeah. You would have got like half an hour off your time if you weren't taking so many pictures. <laughs> well done, mate. Ah, hello there. What's your name? I'm Hannah. I'm Hel Emily from The Rat. Hello, Hannah. Um, you're in about fifth place. Wonderful. Well I'm done. Good stuff. Take care. That's Hannah. Fifth place for the ladies at the moment. Uh, ben Michael says, uh, the weather looks beautiful today. Hope it's similar from my first 50k distance in a fortnight oh ben what are you doing which one are you doing it, it might not be quite this good you know in a fortnight the weather might have started to turn although sometimes it sometimes it's still quite warm even in the first week of october isn't it so you might you might be lucky it depends where it is i know i'm going to scotland next week and i know the weather's not going to be this good in scotland that's for sure um but if you're down south you never know it might be all right I remember running the Downslink Ultra um, near where I live, and that in Octo early October, that is often boiling hot, so you never know. It might be okay. Um, so I'm just looking at Facebook chat. I'm just going to nip over and look at YouTube chat just in case there's anyone else over there watching as we wait for more runners to come through. So there are a few people watching. Uh, Mike Hillborn, hello to hello to you, Mike. Um, says, will the temperature affect times? Uh, most definitely. It's, well, I say that some people are not affected so much by the heat. Other people are. I'm certainly somebody who is affected by the. Heat. Hello, buddy. How's it going? You're right. Oh, not too bad. Yeah. 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 Uh, bad. How are you feeling? Not too bad. Yeah. Just nearly here. Nearly well, uh, I've just got somebody asking on YouTube, uh, what? How does the heat affect runners? No, you kind of got well, used to it by now. You've got yeah. I mean, I mean, at the start you just start sweating quite quickly, and then you just keep having to rehydrate. So yeah. So it's a case of making sure you get the fluids <laughs> yeah. in you, and uh, making sure you don't overstretch yourself in the heat. Totally. You? I've paced it. I've gone. 
a lot steadier today than I normally would have done, I think. But yeah. But yeah, it's hot. Yeah. A b- and, uh, about as hot done. as when we were in Chamonix last year. You know what? I think it's hotter today. <laughs> <honest>, it <laughs> it might year. well be. It might yeah. well be. Take care. Yeah, and you should get in four and a half if you push it, bud. Well done. Uh, so yes, some people it really does affect and slows them down, and, and certainly it does me. Uh, but again, that you know, it could be due to hydration. You know, it could be due to clothing. You've got you've got to wear the right clothing. Um, some people, when they're training for a, a race that they know is going to be really hot, they go uh, to heat chambers and they run in heat chambers. There's some at, some universities have them in labs. And they go, especially I've heard of people when they're training for Marathon de Saab in the desert, they go to heat chambers and they spend time there getting used to the heat, getting their bodies used to that kind of temperature and running in that kind of temperature. Um, but I know that when I've run various marathons in the summertime, the, the intense heat has simply drained me of any energy. And again, Mike asks, um, to what extent do you think the terrain takes time off compared to a flat course? Um, they often say, um, as an average, if you are a three hour marathon runner, you should add 20 minutes to half an hour. Uh, but obviously that depends on how steep the terrain is that you're going to run on. Um, this course, I find this course particularly hard. Uh, the elevation is not massive. It's a, about 1,000 metres, 1,200 metres or so of elevation. And, um, but because it's in the summertime as well, it's often quite warm. So add those two factors together. Um, my fastest ever marathon time on a flat course is three hours, nine minutes. I do this course in around four hours, 45 minutes. So you know i'm adding well over an hour and a half to to my marathon time um just just because of the heat and elevation uh so you know take from that what you want it depends how steep the course is and of course this marathon is 27 miles as opposed to 26 so you can easily add 10 15 minutes of, onto that if you want um every trail marathon is different every trail marathon has different elevation, uh, different ways that the, the course saps your legs. Um, and depending on what time of year it is, whether it's hot or cold, that will make a difference to your finish time as well. So we're just waiting for some more marathon runners to come through. Enjoying your walk? Lovely, yes. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, hard marathon. Yes, it is a tough one. Mind you, yeah. yesterday they did the ultra, which is two yeah, times yeah. round. There wasn't many in the... Oh, no, there was only about 13. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. seen a couple go through. Yeah. 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 It's be- what a beautiful event though, eh? Yeah, I, I've done it three times now. It's and uh, it is tough. I my, I did the 10K this morning. I found that quite tough. Uh, was there a 10K event? <laughs> yeah, there's a whole, it's a whole running festival on over the weekend. So yesterday was the Ultra and the 5K. Yeah. And then today's the 10K, 16 miler and the marathon. Wow. You could have done the 10K, yeah? Yeah. So. We've been talking about it a lot because we run and stuff. And, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely next year. Oh. Is, well, we've, we've, we've been doing a lot of walking this weekend and that's been spectacular. Yeah, so well, you, it, especially in run weather here, like this. Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it was miserable, it might be different, but um, it's just spectacular, yeah. isn't it? I've, like I say, I've done it three years and every year it's been warm. Has it? One year it was not quite as warm. Yeah. yeah. And um, I and I felt that at the end when I finished, I felt the breeze. Yeah. Um, but every, so does it go out to Lulworth in that desert? Uh, or not? No, not as far as Lulworth. Yeah. So it'll start at Swanage. Yeah. They go all the way along the coastline, and then they go inland to Kingston. Yeah. Do you know Kingston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go into Kingston, then they go yeah, along here somewhere, yeah, and, then there, there. and then they go back up to Swire Head. Yeah. Uh-huh. Stay on the coast path then come down past Kimridge Bay and then down into Tynum, right. the abandoned village at Tynum, yeah. and then yeah. up out of Tynum along this ridge here, right. wow. down into Corfe, and then back up okay. to the ridge and then down into Swanage. How many this year then? Um, I think I saw at least 150 start wow. this morning. Yeah. Um, 
good fuse. Yeah. Big gap now, though, between yeah. the, that runner who just went through yeah, and the I next one. A group of them come down here. There, we saw yeah. a few females go through, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, we've had five girls through so yeah. far. So you reckon easy an hour on your normal marathon? I think for this one. God, this yeah, one, yeah. Probably yeah. First. yeah. Yeah. But what sort of time would you do your fastest marathon? I just heard you three. My, my fastest three. is three oh nine. Okay. Oh yeah. And yes. and the fastest I've done this is about four forty. Wow. Because we asked yesterday what the cut off time was, and he said seven hours. Yeah. 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 But, but they let some people through. I, I this I find th this is my hardest marathon. I think yeah. one of the hardest ones I've done. Yeah. And it's not it's not really that the, the elevation is not that great. Yeah. It's no. it's not. You know, I mean, I've done races with 6,000 metres of elevation. This yeah. has only got 1,000, yeah. but it just saps your legs slowly yeah, and yeah. this incline here, a yeah. bit of an incline yeah, there, yeah. and then the heat gets to you. And yeah, yeah I just, it, it really... I've done the Jurassic Beast si uh, Sportif. Oh, times. yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. I haven't done the 100. I've done the 64 or whatever it is. Yes. Something. Um, that, uh, that's been quite hard because you come up from West Lowworth. Up across into the up range. range yeah. yeah. Right, hello, That's back, hard. Yeah. Hard work. Yeah. Well, all of it was. Yeah. Like you say, it's not so much. And then as you go climb, out, when you go out of course, down. there's. I can't remember where the turning is, but it's just outside the edge of the village, and you go up to like Matravers. Yeah. And I think that. I can't remember what the gradient was, but it's on the side. And it was Have there. you got the smallest things on your, on your wheels? Well, no. No. I, I found I found when I changed the spoke not the spokes what am I talking about the sprocket, sprocket yeah. the cassette yeah. to the to the compact cassette yeah. I found that helped a lot with yeah. hills because yeah. you can stay sitting down and just up your cadence yeah, and pedal yeah. faster. Do you do triathlon as well? I I used to. I found that training for swimming, cycling, and running is much. so much hard work, and I'm not very good at triathlons, yeah. so I kind of stuck to running, which I'm not yeah. bad at. That's all right. Well done. What's your name? Mark. Mark. Well done, buddy. Yeah. Keep Thanks going. Thanks for your videos. Oh, no problem at all. You're welcome. Well done, Mark. Hello, mate. How's it going? Yeah, how are you feeling? You feeling good? Yeah, a bit stiff, but not too bad. Thanks. Yeah, six miles to go. Well done. Well done, mate. Well done. A little bit more than six miles, maybe. But uh, they're doing okay. So what time are we on now? We are now on uh, 12.24 p.m. So they've been running for three hours, 24, 25 minutes. So from here, it's over an hour run, really, to get up onto that ridge, all the way up there, and then back down into Swanage. So the, they're going to do really well to get anywhere near four hours, four and a half hours, more likely because they're going to walk up this hill probably here so they'll more likely finish in 4.45 from here which is about my time from here so uh, the marathon runners coming in now are, are doing well and uh, they're trying to make sure the heat doesn't sap them of all their energy before this last climb and uh, and their last six miles into to Swanage. So in a minute, maybe we'll just wait for one or two more runners, then we'll get back down the hill and get our way to Swanage and try and see the finishers coming in there. Catch you in a minute. We'll Thank you. Uh, bye. So some more runners coming through now. Hello there. Hello. How's it going? Awesome. Are you loving it? Would you recommend it? Except it's all uphill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is there is no downhill in this at all. Did nobody tell you that? Confusing. Well done. <laughs> Hello, buddy. How are you feeling? Oh, great. Aside from my knees and my back and my lungs and. Oh my God. What's your name? Brad. Where are you from? Alaska. Did you, you didn't come from Alaska just for this race? No, by way of London. Okay, buddy, well done. Listen, listen if you want to stop and do a half an hour interview, I'd be happy to. Are you enjoying it? <laughs> I am overall, yeah. Yeah? Have you, knees a bit. Have, uh, you, have, you, have you been to this part of the world before? Yes. Uh, spent, I've, I've walked sections of the southwest coast path, and uh, yeah. it's beautiful down here, isn't it? So. it? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, the weather's probably a little bit different to Alaska today. Yes. To be honest... Um, not too much. Yeah. This time of year we're getting close to freezing, but um, the summers 
similar to the UK actually. Yeah, so yeah, you're going to go back home and recommend coming to do the Purbeck Marathon absolutely. to all your friends. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's, when you, nothing, there's nothing like the southwest coast along here. No, no, no. I mean, it is, it is gorgeous. We're very lucky to live so close to it, really. Um, what other races have you done in the past? Um, done a lot of local 10Ks and things like that. Probably my, my favorite thing thus far was the uh, Wales uh, Trail Marathon. Oh, there, okay. Uh, which I did the half. Are you fair. in the UK a lot then? Yeah, I do live here. So okay. I claim Alaska is where, where I was raised. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I live here now for about 15 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, you've still you've, you kind of got a little bit of an English lilt in your American accent. Hello, guys. 100 Club member. When you see a, a top like that, which says 100 on the back, you know that guy's done more than 100 marathons. Well done, Pete. How many? 258. 258 marathons. Well done, buddy. See if I can latch on to yeah, well done, mate. Okay, enjoy the rest of your race. Take care. Take care. Bye. Nice to meet you. you okay, so 12:28 now. Nearly three and a half hours of running, and I can see another marathon runner in the distance. So let's just let's uh, have this marathon runner come through, and then we'll go from here and head back to Swanage and uh, we'll set up at the finish and watch everyone come in at the finish uh, to close out the Purbeck Running Weekend, Purbeck Running Festival here in Swanage in Dorset. But I hope you're appreciating that view at home, guys. I'm just going to check Facebook chat again. So if you are watching on Facebook and you want to say hello, or you want to ask a question quickly, I am just going to look at Facebook chat now before we end the stream and jump in the car and go back to Swanage. Uh, so... Ben Michael is running, doing Run Jurassic. Excellent. That is going to be a really nice race. I think that is organised by White Star Running. Uh, so uh, they will um, they'll do a good job there. Uh, Lorraine Collins says she, she got sunburnt on the Downs Link last year. So agreeing with my comment that even in early October, it can be pretty hot. Hello, buddy. Hi. What's your name? David. David, well done. So David, another marathon runner through. Uh, Tom White says, uh, hello, Tom White from Cornwall. How do you think this run compares to the rat plague in Cornwall? Oh, I think they're different beasts, to be honest. Uh, the rat is, um, well, the plague, that's, uh, that's 60 miles. The ultra yesterday here was 54 miles. So I guess you, I guess you could compare them. The elevation on this would be, would be less. Uh, but every time I've run the plague, um, you, of course, you run the first half in the night. So you're not getting quite as much heat early on in the race. So I would still say the rat is harder, though. Uh, overall, the terrain is more difficult. Um, uh, but I didn't do the ultra yesterday. So who am I to talk? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask the guys that did it. But my, my gut instinct would be that the rat itself, the, the plague would be the harder run, just much steeper elevation, 2,000 metres more elevation uh, than, than this, this ultra. Um, but this today, of course, is the marathon, so we're, they're only doing 27 miles today. Uh, Sarah Green is impressed with the views. And Jonathan Cost is reminding me that tomorrow we're doing uh, a tempo run for um, Monday Run Club on Zwift. So if you if you want to watch more live streaming from uh, from Film My Run, uh, you need to subscribe to the Zwift Live channel. Uh, every Monday and Wednesday, I do live streaming of uh, treadmill running on Zwift, uh, which is great fun. It's like having a little online running club. We all get together online and run with each other in a virtual world. So you may have seen me do that before. Hello, buddy. What's your name? 
Graham, well done, Graham. Feeling good? 50th marathon this year. 50th marathon, great stuff, mate. Well done. Six miles to go. Well, maybe seven. <laughs> and what's your name? Andrew. Hello, Andrew, number 18. Well done, buddy. Thank you very much. Top 30, I think. Well done. Right, so we'll leave it there for marathon runners. We'll get back to the finish line and uh, we'll probably miss the lead runner finishing because I always do, it seems. So, <laughs> but uh, we'll catch the bulk of marathon runners finishing before we call it a day on the Purbeck Running Festival. So let's get down this hill. Take a final view there of Corfe Castle. Uh, hello to Steve Denman, Tom White, Jonathan Cost, Lorraine Collins, Ben Michael. Hello to you guys. And to everyone watching on YouTube as well. If you fancy this next year, get yourself signed up. Search Purbeck Running Festival or Purbeck Marathon. Go and have a look at my videos from previous years. Um, to see if you'd like to do the marathon itself. If not, you can do... Oh, hello, Terry, you're going the wrong way, by the way. But let me, you're going up there, yeah. How are you feeling? Good, getting hot now, though. I was literally just about to leave. Right. Take care, you've got six or seven miles to go. I was following you, not Yeah, follow the signs, buddy, see you later. Right. Well done. <laughs> so that's my friend Terry, <laughs> who was following me down the hill <laughs> instead of following the signs bless him so terry's going to finish in about uh, five hours by the looks of things unless he really tires out on the next section of the run and we're heading down we're heading down this path here to my car at the bottom of the hill and we'll make our way back to swanich so thanks for watching take care and we'll see you in half an hour to 45 minutes or so back in swanich for the next and final stream from the Purbeck Running Festival.